Welcome hoarders, they're going to be playing some more Grand Theft Auto 5. And this testing Tuesday, we're going to be testing the Pegasi Zentorno. Um, as requested at the end of the last video. Um, which the last video was on the Retro Elegy. Uh, which if you guys want to check that out, uh, that will be at the end of this video. Uh, under the previous category. Um, in case you guys didn't know this... Um, I never really explained it. Previous is the previous in the series, not the actual previous video that I did. Because technically from this video, the previous video would be a Call of Duty video. Um, because that would be the last video I did. But it's the previous in the series or playlist, um, that I've done. Um, but... I did once have this car a very, very, very long time ago. Um, since I rebought it, um, I didn't rebuy it recently. I rebought it like I don't know, sometime late last year, probably like November of 2018. I probably bought this again. Um, but I remember this being much, uh, much heavier feeling when you drive it. Um, I don't know if they tuned this, like, or did something with the uh, handling or something like that. But it definitely feels different from what I remember. I remember it handling, like, the, uh, like the regular Elegy. Like, the, the regular, um, newer version of the Elegy. It just, it felt heavy for some reason, which this actually doesn't, for some reason... Sorry, uh, excuse me. Um, but it still looks heavy. Like, it, when you're driving it, it doesn't feel heavy, but it still seems heavy. Um, there's just something about this car that is awkwardly heavy, but it's not. If that makes sense. Um, the handling is still great. I think this is also four-wheel drive. Um... Yep, it is. Most, most of the Pegasi's in this game are four-wheel drive. Obviously excluding the bikes because they only have two wheels. And you, as far as I know, you can't make a two-wheel drive bike except for... I, I don't really know how they did it, but there was some um, like doodlebug type bike in the 60s or 70s. Some, somewhere around there, it was actually two-wheel drive. But, um, besides that, um, being off topic by that, um, I do still like this car. I don't really use it. Um, I, as you guys know, I'm not much of a, uh, supercar or a hypercar guy. I, I like muscle and I like odd vehicles like, uh, Beetles and stuff like that. Things that a lot of people don't have and I, just vehicles that look good to me. Um, I could care less about performance uh, when it comes down to it. Some wonderful driving right there um, on my part. I once had this. You guys, if you want to try it out on your own, um, I actually based this one off of an actual picture of the real-life car. Um, but the way I used to have this was the primary was, like, Sunrise Orange, uh like me metallic sunrise orange and then I made the um what you call it? I made the secondary chrome and the secondary chrome on this looks really good I think um so it'd be all the red that's on here now just chrome instead it looked good back on PS3 because before I bought this again I didn't own it since PS3 so that was indeed a while ago um, getting into performance, handling's good, braking's good, acceleration's gonna be good because it has four-wheel drive, which always helps, more grip, um, makes it a lot easier to get off the line. Uh, top speed, I would say it's quite decent, uh, I wouldn't say it's great, because there's obviously other vehicles that are gonna be faster than this, um, like the Tyrus, stuff like that. Um, it's not an overly fast car, 
but it is, I'd say, in the top 25% of other vehicles as far as speed goes, uh, as far as top end speed goes. Um, but we will actually have to really see with our results of our uh, test that we do, uh, which let's head on over there now. I think that the Zentorner is going to get a quite decent time. I did recently revamp the way that I make the like leaderboard list. I used to have like 13 different pages of uh, car list on uh, Photoshop, so I would have to, like say if something finished in ninth place, I'd have to slip 10th place over on the page two, um, and then uh, 21st or 20th place on the page three, and so on, and I'd have to rechange all the numbers. It was an extremely stupid way of doing it, so what I did now was I created a Word document um, that has all of the times listed, and then all I have to do is copy and paste 10 different times with the vehicles, and it makes things so much easier. What I think I might start doing is posting all of the times in the uh, description of the videos. That way, if you guys want to check, um, not only can you tell what vehicles I've already tested, but you can see what are the fastest vehicles um, as far as, like, um, the drag track and the test track. In my opinion, the test track times are a lot more important than the drag track times because doing turns are so much... Like, everywhere you go, there's going to be turns. There's nowhere that you go other than the airport that's going to just be straights. Um, and turning is a very important part of dealing with handling and stuff like that. If you have shit handling, you're not going to be hitting turns very well. This is actually... This already feels like a very quick time. I think we're going to get probably in the 1... 115 area. 110. I bet we're going to hit 110. Hit that on the inside. Oh, we're under 110. That was like 108... Uh, something. 10, or 207996. I meant 208, but not 108. Okay. Well, now, uh, let's head on over to the leaderboard and see where we placed. On the test track, the Pegasi Zentorno finished in 17th place at 2 minutes 7.996 seconds. Um, right behind the Garotti X80 Proto at 2 minutes 7. 0.796 seconds. Um, very, very good times from the uh, Zentorno in general. Um, I was actually surprised. Um, I didn't like doing like purposely quick cars before because when you would do them, it took so much longer to get the video out. Um, yes, I do know this one's going to be coming out late today. Um, but I, it should be out before midnight, hopefully. <laughs> um, but all around, a very good time um, from the Zentorno. I wasn't expecting it to be extremely fast, but I wasn't expecting it to be bad. Um, it's about where I figured it would be, um, page uh, one or two, so page two, top 20. Um, so that was a very good guess also. Um, but now let's head on over to the drag track and see where we can get over there. I think this will probably be where the car shines. Um, I think it's probably going to do way better on here than whatever it ended up getting on the uh, test track. Um, but it might still have done good on uh, the test track as well because that was a pretty quick time. I'm assuming without, obviously, I can't see into the future, so I, as of right now, don't have a clue where it placed, but the future me already knows. Um, 
I think that that was probably on the first or second page somewhere on there. That's a very quick time. Uh, 23.058. Uh, that sounds like maybe page two or three somewhere in there. I don't think it's a an extremely fast time. Um, but let's now head on over to leaderboard and see where we placed. On the drag track, the Pegasi Zentorno finished in 14th place at 23.058 seconds, right behind the uh, Pro Genitale GTB. Very, very good yet again. Uh, also finished in 14th. I, I believe it finished in 14th in the last uh, one as well. Um, still a very good time. Uh, still within the top 20. Um, honestly surprised it did quite a bit better than what I thought it was going to. Um, a very, very decent car, especially for the prices that everything is now. Um, this was, I believe, $725,000 which is not an extreme amount anymore. It used to be a lot back in the day, but now it isn't much money at all. It takes, you could get that in a couple hours um, by just grinding cars, like grinding, selling cars and stuff. Um, but that's going to be the end of this episode. Uh, post in the comments down below of a vehicle you'd like to see me test in the next episode of Testing Tuesday. Um, Make sure it is the in-game name, as always. Um, I didn't think of saying this when I was recording the video, um, but don't forget that I will be taking my yearly absence, as I always do. Um, I take all of June and all of December off. That way I get a nice break to do what I want to do, um, to get things done that need done, like around the house, all that type of stuff. Um, to get caught up on work which is actually good timing because that's why I missed Monday's video was because of work um, so I should be able to get some of my stuff caught up because what I'll do is record videos during my break um, get like the first couple weeks ready that way I can be a week ahead of schedule or a couple weeks ahead of schedule so I won't have to worry about missing a day because it'll already be ready. Um, but that's going to be the end of this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And I'll see you in the next one. And if you did enjoy the video, make sure you like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to click one of my previous, next, and related videos. And don't forget to check out my other social medias in the description down below.